Hey guys, welcome to Iceland. We are 64.2 degrees north, just 250 kilometers shy of the Arctic Circle. The air temperature is just above freezing. Yet I am in here with nothing but a pair of shorts, sitting nice and comfortably in a natural pool that's the temperature of bath water. And let me tell you, it is absolute bliss. For me at least. How are the crew? Yeah, they're not loving it so much. I'll be quick. There aren't many places in the world that you can do this and that's thanks to Iceland's unique geological setting. The Earth's crust is the hard rock that makes up the top 20 kilometres or so of our planet. It's broken up into about 12 gigantic tectonic plates and heat from the Earth's core causes convection currents in the semi-solid mantle just below the crust and that pushes these tectonic plates around like toys in a bathtub. Where those tectonic plates separate, some of the immense heat from deep within the earth can get closer to the surface. And that's what's happening right here. Beneath Iceland, the Eurasian and the North American plates are moving apart and a plume of mantle material is upwelling from deep within the earth. It's this unique geology that's responsible for Iceland's iconic volcanoes and its geothermal heat. Normally, temperatures will increase by about 35 degrees Celsius for every kilometre depth. But here in Iceland, it gets much, much hotter, much, much quicker. Descend a kilometre below me and the temperature will soar by more than 200 degrees Celsius. All that geothermal heat is good for more than just scenery and a spa day though. So it's about time I get out and I show you how um, I'm also a little bit wrinkly and the crew are not loving the cold. This is a Stirling engine. It is a great example of how you can turn thermal energy and turn it into another form of energy. So the plate at the bottom is being heated up by this boiling water underneath it. The air inside the Stirling engine is getting excited and bouncing around more. That's hitting on the piston, pushing the piston up and turning the wheel on top. Oh my word. Well, there's something you don't see every day. In Iceland, the very ground itself is a vast and inexhaustible source of geothermal energy. So the question is, could we scale this up and use that motion to drive an electromagnetic generator and create electricity? Well, boom, that is exactly what Iceland have done. This is the Nevia Eli geothermal power station, one of seven major plants on this small island that are specifically designed to tap into that hot spot beneath the rocks. To get at the hottest rocks, what they've done is drilled a borehole up to three kilometers deep. Water is pumped down, it gets superheated, it expands into steam and it rushes back up to turn turbines and generate electricity on a national scale. Around 25% of all of Iceland's electricity comes from geothermal sources. The rest comes from hydropower, which means incredibly, all of Iceland's power comes from clean, renewable sources. And this cheap, clean energy has helped transform Iceland's economy from one of Europe's poorest countries to one of its richest. Electricity here is around a third cheaper per kilowatt hour than in the UK. And that has fueled a highly profitable yet energy thirsty aluminium industry that accounts for almost 40% of Iceland's total exports. And it is even starting to power Iceland's newest industry, Bitcoin mining. Tell you what though, maybe they should add some wind turbines to the mix. Crikey! But Iceland's geothermal heat is being harnessed for more than just electricity. While the power plants are drilling down thousands of meters to access truly immense temperatures, you don't actually need to go down that far to reap the benefits. Water that seeps down into the ground naturally is also heated before it resurfaces, sometimes in balmy pools like the one I was enjoying this morning, and sometimes as dramatic geysers like this. And this hot water has perhaps had an even greater impact on Icelanders' lives. It's used in the towns and cities to heat around 90% of Icelandic homes, pumped under the streets and pavements to keep them snow free, and it's even used in agriculture too. In recent decades, greenhouses like this have sprung up across Iceland. They're heated by geothermal energy, and it means that this cold, barren island can produce fresh, delicious produce year round. And I am going in to try some. There we go, I've got one. 
So how many tomatoes do you pick in a day? In our, our greenhouses, we are, we are usually sending to the market one ton every day. We like to grow as most of our own tomatoes as possible, so we can say about 65% of the tomatoes on the market are Icelandic. So how, in a country that is covered in snow a lot of the time, mm-hmm. that you know, doesn't have trees, it's very little vegetation, do you produce tomatoes all year round? The good thing is that we have good help from our nature, so we can make it possible by using the hot water in the ground. But if we're going to do it all year round, we also have to make sun for them. And the good thing in Iceland is that all our electricity, our green making electricity, made from the cold water, the warm water, both by running turbines. What is hot in here? What's it doing? In the greenhouses, we have about 25 kilometers of heating pipes. We are driving on two of them. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The tomato yeah. trolley runs on uh, some of the hot water pipes. Yep. Genius. And this is where he gets the hot water from. This is a geezer. Uh, it gives about 15 litres of water every second. That wasn't enough though, so they dug a borehole. This goes 400 metres down into the ground. The power of nature. So this place really is, it relies on nature to exist. We try to do everything as natural as possible and we can say our main goal is to make a perfect day for our plants every day of the year. So this is a happy tomatoes. And like tomatoes, they are 92% water. 92% water. So it's really important that the plant is getting good quality of water. And in Iceland we have so much good quality cold water coming from the mountains. So we can give them the same water that we are drinking in our houses. Can't get much fresher than that, can you? No, no, no. And then it's best to eat them straight from the plant. Take up one. May I? Mm-hmm. Literally just pick this. This is how they taste best. Oh, that is, that's beautiful. So why is it important for Iceland to support farmers like yourselves? We should be a green buyers, not a grape buyers. And I think it's so important that we, we are buying local because uh, it's so much pollution for the world to be traveling across the world with all this food which we can easily grow or make in our own countries. I mean, the tomatoes which you pick here in the morning, they can be in the supermarket in the afternoon or the morning after. I think we could learn a lot from Iceland and other countries around the world, you know, uh, harnessing modern techniques, using Mm. renewable energy and shopping green and buying green. It's, Mm. It's so much I think we can learn from this wonderful country. I think everybody should think about it because we only have one earth and we like to, to, give the word to our children, the grandchildren on a better, in a better mood. So it means a lot to me. Travelling around Iceland today, it's become really clear how connected the community is to the ground underneath their feet. It gives them the hot water in their homes, they create renewable energy from it, and now they even get their salad and vegetables using what's there, the geothermal energy. It's been a fantastic, fantastic day. And if you want to come on an adventure like this, you now have the chance. We have launched the BBC Earth Presenter Search 2018. Watch this video to find out how to enter. Please make sure you check out loads of the other videos that we've been making here in incredible Iceland. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and then you'll be the first to know when we release a new video. Right, I'm off to make dinner.